welcome back. In this homework, we're going to be going over the quotient rule, which is a way to find the derivative of a quotient of two functions that we already know how to find the derivative of. So uh, this first question really has nothing to do with the quotient rule. We are going back to 2-1, the very first lesson of this unit, uh, and just revisiting this whole limit definition of a derivative. There is most definitely going to be probably one question at the very least on our upcoming test, and I don't want you to forget how to do this. So to find the derivative, we say that f prime of x, which is what we're looking for, we're looking for the derivative of f, and we know what the answer is going to be here. We know if we use power rules, it's going to be 4x plus 3, so we know what the answer should be. Um, but we're going to use the limit definition to find it. So the limit definition is f of x plus h, and maybe I'll write that out to the side. f of x plus h is going to be 2 times x plus h squared plus 3 times x plus h plus 5. And then f of x is given. So the limit definition of the derivative says that the derivative of a function f is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so that's what we're going to set up here. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, which is what I wrote over here, 2 times x plus h squared plus 3 times x plus h plus 5. So that's the f of x plus h part of it. And then minus, so it's this function. Maybe I'll bring this down a little bit. We've got uh, the f of x plus h here, and then we're going to say minus f of x, which is that 2x squared plus 3x plus 5, all over h. And so what we're trying to do is, you know, you, you would just try direct substitution here and try to plug in 0, but we would get a divide by 0 error, so we can't do that. What we're going to try to do is try to factor out an h, hopefully get that to cancel out, and then we can plug in 0. So this will equal the limit as h approaches 0. And right now I'm just going to simplify everything that I have in the numerator. So I'm going to multiply and just have 2 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3x plus 3h plus 5. And then I've got minus 2x squared plus 3x plus 5 all over h. Let's bring that up a little bit. Okay, so this is going to equal the limit as h approaches 0, and now I'm going to distribute the 2. I'm also going to distribute that negative, uh, the minus in between the two functions. So I get 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3x and 3h and 5 minus 2x squared minus 3x minus 5, Whew, all over h. So from here, we're going to cancel out everything that we can. So we see we have a 2x squared that goes away, a 3x, and a 5. And all the remaining terms have an h left over. So I'm kind of running out of room here. That's kind of the problem with this uh, limit definition is it just takes a lot of space. So this is going to equal the limit as h approaches 0. And I'm going to factor out an h out of that numerator. Notice how each one of these terms has an h. So I can factor that out as a GCF. So yeah, this will be h times, did I miss anything? Nope. 4x plus 2h plus 3 all over h. Now as I plug, uh, I still want to plug h to 0, but I can't do that yet. What I need to do first is reduce this h over h to 1. And so now I can go ahead and plug in h here. It's really the only h that's left. And so 2 times 0 is 0. And so the only terms that are going to be left here are going to be 4x plus 3. Now this is what we figured out originally, right? We kind of got that answer without having to go through that whole limit, defer, uh, limit definition process. And number 2 is going to really hit it exactly that. So hey, find this using the power rule. We already know it's going to be 4x plus 3. And, and yeah, obviously that's going to be so much easier. Number three, find dy dx if y is e to the x times sine x. 
Okay, so here, it, we're not dealing with the quotient here, we're dealing with a product. So we're gonna have to use product rule. So just a little reminder of what the product rule is. If you're trying to differentiate a product, like let's say you've got two functions, f and g, you're trying to differentiate that, you're gonna multiply the first function, f, by the derivative of g, so it's fg prime plus f prime g. So looking back at number three, the dy dx or d dx of e to the x sine x is going to equal the first function, which is e to the x. Second function here is going to be sine x. So we've got e to the x times the derivative of sine, which we know is cosine. plus the derivative of the first, e to the x is its own derivative, times sine. And that's it. You don't really need to simplify this any further. As long as you write it like this, you're going to be in good shape. Okay, yeah, and then uh, number four, we are using the quotient rule. So this is what we just learned um, in this last lesson. And so just to remind you about the quotient rule here, if you are dividing two functions and want to find the, differ, uh, the derivative of that quotient, you're going to first differentiate the top and multiply that by the bottom function. That's what T and B are standing for here. And then you'll subtract the top function times the derivative of the bottom. And all of that will be divided by the bottom squared. So here... The top function is x cubed plus 3x. So f prime x here is going to be the derivative of the top, which is 3x squared plus 3, times the bottom, natural log x, minus the top, x cubed plus 3x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 1 over x, all over natural log of x squared. And that's a pretty good answer. You know, I might just leave it like that. One thing you could do potentially is uh, distribute the 1 over x into that binomial and rewrite this piece as x squared plus 3, right? Because x cubed divided by x is x squared and 3x divided by x would be 3. Um, but you don't really need to do that. There's, there's not, it doesn't ask you to fully simplify here or anything. So you could just leave it alone. Number five, it says determine the equation of the line tangent to the graph at x equals eight. All right, so a couple of little quick notes here. Equation of the line tangent to the graph, we're gonna get our point and our slope ready to go. And we're going to just rewrite the point slope form so we get, we're prepared to plug everything in. And then we want to, um, we need to find the, to find that slope, we're gonna need the derivative of f of x. I'm actually going to rewrite f of x using rational exponents here, x to the two-thirds, so that the derivative of f can be a little bit easier to find, and we can just use the power rule. So we got two-thirds times x to the negative one-third. Okay. So to find this point, we're interested in what's happening at x equals 8. That's going to be the x-coordinate of my point. So to find the y-coordinate, I need to plug that into the original function. So f of 8 is equal to the cube root of 8 squared. Now, when you're raising a, a base to a power and also taking some kind of root of it, the order in which you perform those two operations doesn't, doesn't matter. So in other words, we could take the cube root and then square, or we could square and then take the cube root. Now, what I would recommend is that you shrink the number before you expand it. What I mean by that is we want to take the cube root first and then square. I think doing the mental math is going to be a little bit easier than trying to cube root of 64. So the cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. 
So that's going to be our y coordinate. Now to get the slope, we're going to find the derivative at 8. So we need to plug this in, 2 thirds. Now this x to the negative 1 third. What that really means is 1 over the cube root of x. So that would be the cube root of 8. So that would be 2 thirds times 1 half. Cube root of 8 is 2. So that would be 2, and then 3 times 2 is 6, 2 sixths, which is 1 third. So our equation should be y minus 4 equals 1 third times x minus 8. Number six is asking us to find the slope of h when x is 2. And uh, we're given h as a product of two functions, right? We've got x cubed, we've got g of x. So if we need to find h prime, we're going to have to use the product rule. So h prime of x would be, well, let's go back to the product rule here. We've got the first function, x cubed, times the derivative of the second. And then we're going to add the derivative of the first times the second. So if I want h prime of 2, or in other words, the slope when x is 2, I'm just going to plug in 2 into our slope equation, our, into our derivative. 2 cubed times g prime of 2 plus 3 times 2 squared times g of 2. Now g of 2 and g prime of 2 are both given. And those are really the only pieces of information that we have about g. That's all we need to answer this question. So this will equal 8 times g prime of 2, which is 3. And you can see that from above. Plus 3 times 4 is 12 times negative 4. So this is going to be 24 minus 48. So that would be negative 24. Number seven, ugh, it was a crazy long equation, and we're supposed to find the derivative. Really, this looks a lot harder than it really is because all of these functions are combined using addition or subtraction. So we can find the derivative of each little expression separately. Now I'm going to rewrite this so that these fractions and square roots are written using exponents. That way we can just apply the power rule to those terms. Oh gosh, I'm noticing right, right away this x e to the x, we're going to need to use product rule on that one, and we're going to have to use product rule on this one out here, geez. So yeah, this is going to be a long one. So we've got 4 sine x minus 3x times natural log x. Okay, so let's just start, let's, do, let's kind of go through one term at a time here to find the derivative. So we'll start with just Doing a little power rule here. That's going to be 15x to the fourth. Now we know that the derivative of cosine is the opposite of sine. So this is going to be minus sine x. We could use the power rule on this next term, negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. And we could use power rule in the next one as well. So we're going to have minus 3 halves times x to the negative 3 halves. I should say negative 3 halves. a little hard to see that negative. Space that out a little bit more. And then, okay, so now we're on this one, right? This x e to the x, in which case we've got to use the product rule. Okay, so we've got fg prime plus f prime g. So fg prime is going to be x times the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x. And then we have plus f prime g. So the derivative of x is just 1. And then times e to the x. So that wasn't too bad, but you just got to be aware that you're going to have to do that. Uh, and now we're going to differentiate. Now we know the derivative of sine is cosine, so the derivative of 4 sine should be 4 cosine. And then we're going to have to use product rule one more time on this negative 3x uh, times the natural log x. So the derivative of this, we're going to have to use the product rule. Okay, fg prime plus f prime g. So f, um, f, f, our f is this negative 3x, okay, times the derivative of natural log x. So that's 
times one over X. And we can actually clean that up. I might come back and clean that up. That's really the only thing that you could clean up here uh, or that you even would. I guess you could rewrite some of these negative exponents back as fractions, but that's not really necessary. Okay, plus, so we have FG prime plus F prime G. So the derivative of negative three X is negative three. This is gonna be minus three. times natural log x, and there you go. So this is basically our answer. Really the only thing you may, might consider doing is multiplying this out and just getting negative three, because x divided by x is one. But you really don't need to, and honestly, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and just leave it as is. It is a crazy long equation though. This is one of those equations you can impress your parents with. <laughs> Where you're like, hey, check out, I can find a function that defines the slope of this other wacky function. Okay, number eight. We've got this function one over g of x and wanna find um, the derivative of it. And then plug in four, this is what we're trying to find here. So we wanna find the derivative and we're gonna use the quotient rule. Okay, so we're gonna, Differentiate the top, which is just zero. So it's zero times g of x minus the top, which is one times g prime all over g of x squared. Now the zero, obviously we can kind of ignore that because zero times anything is zero. So it's really just negative g prime over g squared. So f prime of four is gonna be negative and then g prime x, g prime four is seven. So negative seven over, and then g of four is eight. So that's eight squared is 64. There's our answer for number eight. Number nine. All right, what do we got here? We've got a table and we've got some values for f and f prime and g and g prime. And we first want to know what is the derivative of h at 5 when h is represented by this quotient. So that's our little clue that we're going to have to use the quotient rule. So h prime of x is going to be the derivative of the top, that's 6x, times the bottom, f of x, plus... I'm sorry, not plus, minus the top, which is 3x squared times the derivative of the bottom. Okay, we're going to divide that by f of x squared. And now I want to evaluate this at x equals 5. So h prime of 5 would be 6 times 5 times f of five, which I can see right here is negative three, minus three times x, which is five squared, times the derivative of f at five, so that would be right here is two. So times two, all over f of x squared, in this case, f of five squared. So f of five was negative three, negative three squared is gonna be nine. So now we can reduce this, hopefully. Oh, this is not gonna be that pleasant to do without a calculator, but let's see if we can't handle this. We got six times five is 30, times negative three is gonna be negative 90. And then uh, to the right, we've got five squared is 25, times two, 25 times two is 50, 50 times negative three will be negative 150, all over nine. So this will be negative 240 over nine. Don't think 240 is a multiple of three, so I think that's gonna be our answer. Let me try to rewrite that too, it looks kinda weird. Negative 240 over nine. All right, part B. We're trying to do kind of the same thing here, but we're gonna use the product rule instead of the quotient rule. And so the derivative of P it's going to be fg prime, so the first function is x to the fourth, 
times g prime x plus the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed times g of x. So evaluating that at 2 means I'm just going to plug in 2 everywhere where I see it, an x. And just start evaluating. So we got 2 to the fourth, which is 16. So this is 16 times g prime of 2 is going to be negative 2. We can see that here. So you get negative 2 times 16. So 16 times negative 2 plus 4 times 2 cubed is 8. And 8 times 4 is 32 uh, times g of 2, which we see right here, is 4. So this is going to be negative 32 plus 128. So we get the derivative of p at 2 is 96. Letter C. It looks like we're going to have another quotient property here, or quotient rule. So the derivative of p will be the derivative of the top, which is g prime x, times 2x plus 3, minus g of x times the derivative of the bottom, which is just 2, all over 2x plus 3 squared. And now I can evaluate that at x equals 2. g prime 2, let's see if we can't do this. I'm going to run out of space here. So uh, g prime of 2, we already circled that right here, is negative 2 times 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. So I'm going to say negative 2 times 7 minus g of 2, which we already found over here was 4. So minus 4 times 2. All over, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7, and 7 squared is 49. So yeah. P, the slope of P at 2 is, let's see, negative 14 minus 8 is negative 22 over 49. Letter D says determine the equation line tangent to the graph of, uh, of f of x at x equals 5. Okay, so right away I'm writing down my point, my slope, and my format y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So let's find our point and our slope. So if, to first find the point, we have our x is 5, so we know that's going to be the coordinate. This y value is going to be f of 5. So we're going to have to go back up and find f of 5, which you can see is negative 3. So that's our y coordinate. The slope is going to be the derivative of f at 5. So I can find that in the graph, or in the table. Uh, and I see right here, it's 2. So my equation is going to be y plus 3 equals 2 times x minus 5. All right, we just have one more page left. Number 10 says, find the derivative of each of the following functions. So here we're just practicing some more. Um, this first one should be the easiest one. We're just using power rule here. Uh, so the derivative of f will be 35x to the fourth minus 6. Not much to say about that. You guys are really good with the power rule, so I'm not going to elaborate. B, we can use the power rule for part of it, but let's rewrite it first. So f of x is going to be x to the negative 5 halves power minus 2 times x to the negative 1 plus x times sine x. Now we can use the power rule for the first two terms, but we'll have to use the product rule for the last one because we have x times sine x. So f prime will be negative 5 halves x to the power of negative 7 halves plus 2x to the negative second power, 
And now I'm going to use the product rule here. So hopefully at this point, you're, you're getting pretty good with the product rule. It's going to be X times cosine X plus one times sine X. Getting kind of sloppy with my parentheses there. All right. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's all there is to it. You don't have to simplify it any further. Now for C, we're going to have to use the quotient rule. Okay, so my top function is 3x squared plus 2x. So the derivative of that is 6x plus 2. The bottom function is cosine x. And the derivative of that bottom function is negative sine x. I can't really fit that, that last x in there. We can squeeze this in a little bit. Sine x. Yeah, that's close enough. So P prime of X is going to be cosine X or let's see here, we'll start with the derivative of the top. So actually I'm going to start with six X plus two times the bottom function, which is cosine X. And that should be the same function that we're squaring in the denominator minus three X squared plus two X, which is the top function times the opposite of sine x. And you could just leave it like this, okay? Uh, it's okay to start getting in the habit of not simplifying. I think that is perfectly reasonable, um, and this is a good answer. Number 11, find both the first and the second derivative. So to find the second derivative, you just take the derivative of the derivative. Um, so let's start by finding f prime. And we have a product here, right? 2x times sine x. So we can use the product rule. So this will be 2x times the derivative of sine, which is cosine, plus 2, which is the derivative of 2x, times sine x. So that's our first derivative. To find the second derivative, we're going to differentiate each of these. Now, what that means is I'm going to have to use product rule for this product. And I could just use the uh, um, my transcendental derivatives to get the last one. So we've got 2x times negative sine x plus 2 times cosine x. And so that's what, you know, this, this product here, the derivative of that product is what I have here. So I haven't even started with the last term here. The derivative of 2 sine x is going to be 2 cosine x. Notice here we have two instances of cosine x. So you could feasibly combine them, although it's not totally necessary. But I'm going to rewrite this as negative 2x sine x plus 4 cosine x. So if you combine the two cosine, the two, two cosine x's, you get 4 cosine x. Number 12. Is this our last? This is our last one. Determine the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, so at x equals one, what this is basically saying is find the derivative at one. That's all it's saying. So we need to find the derivative using the product rule. So f prime x and uh, oh, you know what? Should we use product rule here? I'm kind of thinking we actually don't even need product rule here because what we could do is we could distribute this x cubed and rewrite this. I kind of like this better as x cubed plus now at square root of x is x to the one half. So one half or just 0.5 times three or plus three is going to be 3.5. Yeah. And so now we could just use the power rule. Forget the product rule on this one. So you could use the product rule. You're not going to get the wrong answer if you do, but this is clearly easier. Okay, so there's my derivative, and I want to know what's that instantaneous rate of change when x is specifically 1. So I'm going to substitute in 1 to my derivative equation just to start simplifying. Because it's 1, the simplification will be pretty easy here because 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. So we get 3 plus 3.5, because we're just multiplying by 1 again. And so f, or I, say, I should just say the instantaneous rate of change at x equals 1 of f is 6.5.
And that about wraps it up for today's lesson and tonight's homework. Uh, next time, we will get into a few more transcendental derivatives. Specifically, we're going to go over the rest of the six trig derivatives. We've already done sine and cosine, but we haven't talked about tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. So we'll get into all that um, in the next lesson. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.